Helen E here with Eyes on the Game here in LA at the uh, temporary residence of Polly Malinaji uh, while eating some pistachios. Great to see you again. I feel like last time I saw you, we were eating that pizza with a lot of sauce on it. Yeah, that was a good pizza, right? It was pretty good. Well, unfortunately, I have to lower the pizza intake, so I'm having some pistachios this time. Oh, healthy pistachio ice cream is also a very good option. All right, I'll have some of that later. <laughs> Well, uh, how is your training camp going, your fight, June 22nd, right around the corner, going down in Tampa? It's good. You know, we've been working really good. Um, I feel like we're really sharpening up. Um, things are coming together. So, you know, uh, I look forward to, you know, finally beating some ass and uh, beating this guy's ass and then um, enjoying the summer. It's right before the summer, so it's perfect, you know. Make a nice check before the summer. Kick this guy's ass, feel real good, and then uh, go celebrate. So um, I'm uh, looking forward to it. In New York, you were telling me that you want to put him in a coma. Uh, do you regret those words? No, I mean I don't. I don't need to regret anything I say. I, you know, it's uh, if his if his team loves him and if his corner loves him, they'll know what to do when when he's under under the fire. You know, because he will be under the fire, and he's gonna get badly damaged. You know, so you know it's it's a matter of them stopping. You know, I will say sometimes he's probably too brave for his own good. You know. And uh, in this sport, this is not MMA, you know, guys, uh, guys actually die and guys actually uh, take permanent damage, you know, as a matter of fact, statistically, we've had, we have more deaths in a year than MMA have, has uh, in all its time it's been in existence. So not that I'm saying, not that I'm trying to downgrade the dangers of MMA because any combat sport is dangerous, but this is a different thing he's entering. It's, uh, it's not, uh, it's not for the faint of heart and it's not for, um, it's not for uh, guys like him, to tell you the truth. He doesn't know how to get out of the way of a punch. He doesn't know how to slip punches. And, uh, yeah, sure, it's different kind of boxing. It's no gloves. But at the end of the day, just strikes. You know, we can't, we can't uh, 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 grapple and lose time or waste time or anything. Um, I mean, he can try to headlock me, I guess, if he wants to. I mean, I know that's part of the rules. But, you know, you're going to get cut up before you get there, you know. So we'll see what happens. If you do beat him, though, will that kind of end this beef between you, Artem, Conor McGregor, and, and everyone in that camp? I don't know. Whatever. You know, I mean, I just kind of, I just kind of take it as it comes, you know. Um, I, uh, it'll, it'll be nice to smack one of them around, you know. At least one of them stepped up to the table. So, it'll be nice. I mean, it's like, I don't know. The feeling I'm gonna have of, of just beating the shit out of any of those guys is a good feeling, you know. Like it's, like, I don't I don't really feel any remorse uh, for any damage I do to him or uh, any of the guys really, you know. So it'll it'll feel it'll be fun. I don't know. I can't I can't really say what's gonna happen after, you know. We have a we have a press conference scheduled for next week though, so that'll be interesting as well. But speaking of when you said deaths in boxing, Deontay Wilder made a comment. He does fight Dominic Brazil this weekend and also a lot of animosity between them. But he said boxing is the only sport where you can get paid to kill someone in the ring. What do you think about that? Yeah, sometimes it happens. I mean, I don't think we're all, I don't think any of us are proud of it, you know. Um, my, my problem is, um, not so much what Deontay said, you know, because it does happen and he's in, he's in fight mode. It's fight week, you know, some, you know, we, we put our minds into a different place on fight week, you know, um, you ask Deontay the same question next week, he may or may not respond the same way, but right now his focus is on something different, you know, so I, I, I kind of get it, you know, I kind of get where his mind is at, you know, he's, he's in damage, do damage mode, you know, and it's fight week. Um, but my problem is, uh, uh, the mixed martial arts community, they, they, they downgrade boxing like it's not as dangerous of a sport or not a dangerous sport or, or whatever. And I've never really disrespected the sport of mixed martial arts or any combat sports. I've always felt like they always deserve a lot of respect for, um, you know, entering in, into any uh, form of combat uh, professionally and, and putting yourself at risk and on the line, you know. So, so when, you, when you downgrade or when you... Uh, make fun of or, or ridicule the the most dangerous of all those sports you know because to me it's probably boxing and maybe muay thai are the most dangerous of all the sports you know uh where deaths come because there's strikes and only strikes you know uh i think at that point you know it's it'd be nice to maybe show show you that one of your own takes it like that you know because they don't they don't end the scene that you know I, this reminds me of like the 70s formula one racers you know where like you know, I've, I've, I know the story because I'm, I'm Italian and my family, they follow a lot of Formula One. So all my life I've been around, you know, soccer, sports like soccer and Formula One. But before I was born, you know, there were, there were, and even into the 80s and early 90s, you know, there were a lot of deaths in Formula One. So you'd see the superstars 
one week to the next and suddenly they'd be dead you know what i'm saying so so it's kind of a it's kind of gory and scary you know and 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 you as a fan you kind of learn to respect that fear of what these guys put themselves and through and what they, they go through you know uh, i don't think mixed martial arts fans have that you know they see their stars they treat it like wrestling you know because nobody ever gets hurt that permanently nobody ever gets killed nobody ever does anything to them it's literally like it's literally i, I see the way they talk and the way they, even the fighters talk it's like it's like wrestling to them because at the end of the day they're going to get to go home that night and they're going to be totally normal they might get knocked out badly they might get a bad cut and a lot of blood broken bones even but at the end of the day they're going to get to go home to their families and be totally normal Boxers don't always have that option, uh, um, and uh, just like back in the day, Formula One racers didn't have that option. The difference is Formula One fans also understood this. Uh, boxing fans understand this. Um, it'd be interesting if, if uh, um, mixed martial arts fans don't learn to understand this after June 22nd. Um, and I'm not saying, I'm not making any predictions, but I, I, I'll tell you, if Artem Lobov's team cares about him any, in any way, they'll, they'll protect him in some way because he's going to get hurt badly. Um, but also, like I said, with Deontay making that statement and you said he's in fight mode, I can tell you're in fight mode as well. But do you blame him for saying that comment? Because he's been getting a little backlash for saying that. You know, sometimes the media puts a lot of pressure on us and a lot of stress on us. And so, you know, we kind of react uh, a, a bit hasty, you know. Um, again, you put a lot of pressure on a guy. You know, he's been getting a lot of stress since his last fight, you know. Um, no matter what Deontay does, it's never good enough. And sure, I was one of the guys that felt he didn't win that fight. But nonetheless, nonetheless, he's still a, a top-level fighter, a top-level champion. And any top-level fighter at that level especially deserves to be at least respected a little bit more, you know. So I think when he's on fight, he's in fight week. And the, he's mounting, the frustration is mounting of people uh, kind of, you know, he, him dealing with these critics. And then he's in fight week where, you know, he's already got a threat in front of him this week. And he's got to hurt that threat because that threat is looking to hurt him. Sure, he's going to say certain things, you know. Um, Listen, at the end of the day, it's between him and Dominic Brazil. It's not up to me. It's not up to anybody to give that opinion. This is a fight. If you don't want to watch, then, then go, go watch golf or something. You know what I'm saying? This is what we do. We fight and, and we hurt each other. And, uh, um, and if we talk about hurting each other, that's just a simple fact of it. You know, it's not a disrespect to, um, to any of the other fighters that have been hurt. As a matter of fact, it's, it's a shame when it happens and, and it hits us hard, you know. But, um, but at the end of the day, um, uh, you know, it, it's 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 fight week for him, and he and he's in that mode. Um, and like I said, I mean, for me with Lobov, it's it's more so th that to me, I take that as a disrespect because there have been fighters who have had their lives altered permanently. There have been fighters who have died, and I've known them and their families. I've known many of them. I've been I've been in boxing 20 years, and I've known them firsthand. I've been ringside during uh, catastrophic injuries of fighters as well. Um, so I, I don't uh, I don't take to it lightly what mixed martial arts fans say and, and, and what Lobov says about, um, you know, uh, padding on the gloves and, and what, whatever we wear. Uh, Eight-ounce gloves hurt. Uh, um, I'm sure I'm not saying mixed martial arts gloves don't hurt, but at the end of the day, um, both sports are very dangerous, but um, we have the deaths in our sport. And I don't say that with a badge of honor. I say that because it's true. And uh, if you don't respect that, I'm going to make you respect that the hard way. What do you think uh, can be done to kind of lower the number of that? I don't, I don't think there's anything you're going to do. Yeah. It's fight. You know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. You know, how many times do you see a fight where a guy takes a ton of damage and he comes out and he's okay? And then a guy takes less damage and he doesn't come out that, that okay, you know, or he, or he comes out very, the worst for wear very badly, you know, so it's, an also, it's also on the individual too, you know, some guys, every human being is different, some guys, some human beings can take more punishment than others, some human beings can live through more than others, you know, and also the time, that, you know, what you went through in camp, you know, what, how hard it was to make weight, all these other, all these, all these factors come into play, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, uh, it's a striking sport, and it's just a striking sport, so you know, at the end of the day, blood, broken bones, cuts, they don't kill you. You'll always heal from those. Brain trauma kills you. Brain trauma can kill you. Brain trauma can alter your life. So this is why striking combat sports are the dangerous ones, especially the ones that only allow striking. Like, again, Muay Thai and, and boxing. To me, they're very dangerous. Well, recently, Canelo uh, did beat Danny Jacobs. I know you weren't in Las Vegas for that fight, but what did you make of it if you did watch it? Um, I thought it was... Very good tactical fight. You know, it wasn't super exciting, but it was, for the, for the intelligent eye, it was a very good tactical fight. Um, and I don't have a problem with Canelo winning. 
If Danny would have won, I wouldn't have had a problem with that either. I thought uh, Danny uh, got himself w right back into the fight in the second half of it with a good body attack and, um, you know, backing up Canelo and using his size once the body attack started taking effect. But early on, especially, I thought Canelo, especially about four to six, I really loved the way Canelo was boxing. You know, at close range, using that jab and, and not just having Danny missing off the head movement, but also punching off of his head movement very fluidly, you know, so... It's not that easy to do when you have the head movement. Yeah, sure, you want to make a guy miss, but also to punch right off that head movement very nicely, very fluidly. It was very impressive. So I think both guys impressed me in, in, in their own way, in their own right, you know. And uh, I think when it was over, I don't think you had a definitive winner. But, um, of course, you know, it, it, I, it's not the kind of fight where, like, where I felt Golovkin for sure beat be Canelo. I, I, I think in this case... If Danny had won the fight, it wouldn't have been a tragedy. If Canelo wins the fight, it's not a tragedy. It's uh, it's two good fighters, and and they and they matched up, and they matched up very well. Who do you think Canelo should fight next? I don't know. You know, I don't think Canelo is head and shoulders above the rest of the division. And I don't think that's a knock on him. I don't. I think that's a also a, a something to be said that is a compliment to the middleweight division. I, I I'd love to see Canelo fight Andre. You know, I'd love to see maybe Golovkin get a third fight, even if he's getting up there in age. He kind of deserves the payday. You know. Uh, because, you know, I think he, was, he got us, had some hard luck in the first two decisions. Um, and even Danny. I mean, Danny, Danny is, is there for, you know, to uh, – he was it was a good competitive fight. You know, I, even a rematch with Danny is not the end of the world. I, th I think Canelo is – a guy who everybody wants to see fight everybody because he's so popular. And obviously when a guy is like that, you know, you want to see, you can't wait to see him again. And I think that's what Canelo has. He has that, that the must-see TV aspect to him. So he can only fight one guy at a time. But, um, you know, whoever it is, there are plenty of top middleweights in there. You know, I'd love to see Jamal Charlo too. You know, it, it would be a great fight, you know. And uh, who is the mandatory they announced now? Der Dervinenko? Yeah, yeah I, that's a good fight too. You know, it's a, it's a solid fight as well. Sergey's done well in his career. Uh, so, he, you know, that would be a fun fight. I, 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 like I said, I don't think, I think Canelo's very good. I don't think he's head and shoulders above the rest of the division, of the division though. But he'll, he'll probably always get the close decisions because of his popularity. Uh, they won't ever go the other way. You know, a close decision can usually go either way. I think if you get a close decision with Canelo, it'll probably always go his way. But I think, uh, but I do think that uh, him and the rest of the top middleweights are, are very close to one another, you know, as far as the level of, of where they're at. And it's a good middleweight division and it's a fun middleweight division. Personally, if I had my personal say, probably next I'd love to see Andre get the shot. Well, speaking of great divisions and stacked divisions, the welterweight division, a lot going on, a lot of big fights happening uh, and being announced for this summer. Uh, I do know Errol Spence has that fight against Sean Porter, but I did talk to him recently because Bob Arum had said that he was trying to make that fight against Terrence Crawford happen with a 50-50 split. I asked Errol what would make him happy, and he said a 60-40 split. What do you make of that? Um, I don't know. You know, I don't get involved with the financial negotiations. I'd love to see the fight just like everybody else. We'd love to see the fight. Um, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. You know, I, I hope that they can find a way to make that fight. I think they always talk about the fact that you know, it's difficult to make fights in this in this uh, in this new boxing day with all this po the politics involved. But I hope that fight can eventually get made. But in the meantime, Spence and, and Porter is a good fight to watch. But who do you think would win, Spence or Crawford? Um, right now, my pick is Spence. You know, but they're both very good fighters, and you know, it's not like it's not like a, just because I say it, it's definitely going to happen. You know, that's the way it goes. I, I, you know, everybody has their pick. It's not this isn't the kind of fight where I don't think there's a wrong answer. You just kind of wait to watch the fight and see what happens. Is um. Is that the schmo in the background? Bro, what are you doing here? Oh, he's eating, man. Yeah, he's I know. Playing some uh, FIFA with your roommate. With Junior? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. He gave. You it. have FIFA? Yeah. Hey, if you're playing Junior, I know you caught a bad, bro. Nobody could beat that kid. Did you win? Schmo doesn't reveal his secrets on camera, win or lose. Of course, not with Junior. <laughs> Wait, so I did see in that interview, Polly. I wanted to ask you about it. Uh, when you spoke to the schmo. You were peeing on a mural? Yeah. Connor's yeah. mural? Yeah. I was, my, I was on my way home to, to piss on the Connor McGregor mural, yeah. I, I didn't want to record that one because, you know, it, we don't want to we don't want to antagonize the cops to arrest me. Steady stream? Steady stream. Right off his face. Wow, man. <laughs> You're really making the Irish proud over here, man. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> okay. He's chowing on those pistachios right now. I had it. I call, I call it a show. I don't want to break my teeth. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you to break your teeth before the fight. By the way, you ever break your teeth during fights? Never. 
Never. I've got all my real teeth. I've always had all my real teeth. So well, mouth guards. I've always invested in good mouth guards and a good defense. Okay. <laughs> what do you got for me, Helen Esports? <laughs> I think it's your turn to ask some questions. All right, I'm back, back in action, baby. The last time the schmo saw you, we're over there in uh, that boxing gym in Santa Monica. Loveworks. Loveworks. Give him mm -hmm. a shout out, baby. 17th in San and uh, what, Wilshire? Uh, 14th in Wilshire. 14th in Wilshire. Look at you, man, talking like a Los Angelino. I thought you're from New York. Yeah, but Santa Monica's all right. The rest of Los Angeles is eh, but Santa Monica's all right. What makes you say that, Paulie? The schmo's been here for seven and a half years. Um, the beach. It's chill. Good fish. Yeah, it's good fish, but have you been to, like, uh, Manhattan Beach, the South Bay? I don't like to sit in traffic, bro. You guys' traffic sucks. So does New York. The schmo's been not inside an automobile bad. with you, not, man. Not as, Still alive. Not, not, as, not, as, <laughs> not as bad as London, in London or L.A., bro. The two worst places of traffic. I, I, I'll walk 10 miles in London or L.A. before I start driving anywhere. But speaking of London, though... This schmo recently spoke to Eddie Hearn. I spoke to him too. Uh, what do you think about Anthony Joshua on June 1st? Wait, hang on, man. Real quick. We'll ask him about Anthony Joshua. We want to hear about the debut, but Eddie Hearn on camera offered the schmo a job. No follow-up. What do you make of that? Do you think Eddie Hearn's a man of his word? And then let's get to Joshua. Eddie's a man of his word. I mean, Eddie's a, Eddie's typically, a, you know, he's, he's treated all his fighters good. I, I, I rate promoters based on how their fighters talk about them. And uh, I've never heard any of Eddie's fighters complain, so... I think it's, uh, if he's told you that, and you're interested, bro, I'd follow up if I was you. Okay, TikTok, let's do that, says the schmo. Okay, Anthony Joshua. Yeah, what do you think about him making his U.S. debut? I think it's, uh, it's a good thing. You know, Anthony's very popular in the, in the U.K., and he's gained a, a big following in the U.K., and probably more of a global following at this point. So I think there are a lot of fans in the U.S. that have been curious to see him. So, you know, well, uh, it'll be nice. What about Andy Ruiz, though? He's a good fighter. You know, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what, at this point, what we can ask for at last minute. You know, Schmo, I mean, it's not, we, we, it's not like me and you can get in there. You know what I'm saying? So, so I might as well let Andy get a shot. Two different weight divisions, Paulie. But hold your horse here for a second. What do you make of it's going to be Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua? Or where does Tyson Fury fit in this triangle? He fits. He fits the way they've always Which been. Which one goes first? I don't... It's, man, it's Deontay. Is, is anybody going to go first? I mean, already Deontay... Listen, Deontay and Tyson already fought each other. So at least we got we saw one direct matchup. You know, it, it set up a great rematch that never happens now, but but at least we saw one great matchup. Um, we'll see. You know, politics are really difficult to, to navigate in boxing, man. But, but, of course, if I see any of those three guys against one another, I'll be happy, you know? But how can we hear Deontay Wilder calling, uh, talking with Joshua, engaging with Joshua and not Tyson Fury? I think Tyson is just probably happy that he finally got a, a TV contract that, were, that he was deserving of, just like the other two got it, you know, and I think, uh, I think he's just kind of going to go about his business in that way, you know, I, I don't think he's trying to avoid anybody, because obviously he's the one that fought Klitschko first, he's the, one that, he's the one that fought Deontay, you know, so, and, and if, the, if the circumstances present themselves the right way, I'm sure he would fight either AJ or Wilder, I, I think any of these guys, I, I don't think any of these guys are ducking each other, I just think politics are, are, are difficult but to explain. And hard to speaking of politics, what do you think is more likely to happen first though the rematch Deontay versus Tyson or Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Anthony Joshua versus Tyson I don't know you stumped me that's what we call a sh moment right there. but so what <laughs> but what about would that be more likely or the Errol Spence Terrence Crawford I don't know I don't know they're they're all tough fights to make they, and they all, they're, all, they're all dealing with the same politics. So if you can navigate the politics with one, politics with one you would hope that you can navigate so the how, politics. So how it's do... It's politics. It's different networks uh, uh, invested heavily in, in each individual fighters, and they don't want to let the other guy go. See, this is the Schmo's thought, and this is why the UFC is successful under Dana White. There's one central leadership. The problem with boxing, all these promoters want to say too much politics. The best yeah. fights don't happen, at least in the prime. Pacquiao and Mayweather happen way after their primes. Yeah, well, with the UFC, that, that is uh, an advantage. But the, you also, unfortunately, see the, the true essence of, of nature and human beings uh, when they get greedy. And so when, if, when the UFC became the only game in town, fighters started getting severely underpaid. So, you know, if Dana had given a great example of how to do that with the only game in town and, and treated everybody the right way, I think even boxing fans would be more tuned into the fact that, you know, one promoter will be good. But because he's such a piece of shit and, and, and treated the fighters so badly and, and underpaid them so badly, I think 
everybody understands that the only being the only game in town, uh, it may make fights, but it hurts the fighters from a business perspective. And these guys typically need to make a living, and, and they need to make a living because a lot of them don't do anything else very well except fight. See, this is why the schmo thinks your boy Conor McGregor is smart. I don't think he's going to enter the octagon unless he gets ownership percentage. Like, he's going after, uh, you know, guys like Mark Wahlberg's ownership stock. Unless he gets some stock in the game, some skin in the game, I don't think he's going to make a contract like he would make with that uh, Mayweather fight. I think Conor's just tired of getting his ass whooped, if you ask me. But, but I think he knows how to uh, make headlines very good, and uh, he'll continue to make headlines. But I... I you know, I, I do think that he's sick of getting his ass whooped. I don't think there's anybody he's going to beat at the top level unless he diminishes the level of his opposition. I don't, I don't see him being able to beat any, any of those guys. So, so I, don't, I don't know that um, it, it's worth it for him to fight again. Um, he's got, you know, the dumbest fans in professional sports, I like to call mixed martial arts fans, convinced that he's a winner even though he hasn't won a fight since when, 2016? 2016, right? It's been a while. Yeah. I retired in 2016. But and, I, and, and we both haven't won a fight since the same year. But I retired. He didn't. I just think he's tired of getting his ass whooped, you know? I mean, wouldn't you be tired again? If I was Conor McGregor, I'd be tired of getting my ass I just whooped. Don't think, I just don't think the money's worth going back in the ring for, regardless if he win or lose, it's not worth the money. You know, there's only, there's only so much of a price tag you're going to put on getting your ass whooped constantly. You know, otherwise you become like a hooker. You know, he's, he's like a high-priced hooker. He just gets his ass whooped. And uh, <laughs> let me just stop there. <laughs> Wait, but what about the sparring video? So all that, because he kept trying to throw the teasers out, so that, that's gone. I don't, really, I don't really, like, it's not so much of a, of a problem anymore, because I think anybody with a brain understands what really happened at this point. Um, but you know what it is? If, if mixed martial arts media were really media and they weren't groupies, it would have probably put enough pressure on him already. Like, because it's not like he, we sparred and he just didn't talk about it anymore. He continues to put out videos, slight little video, use the same video over and over again. Now he's putting out pictures. So at a certain point, I know if I'm a reporter, if I'm a reporter, you know, and, and I ask him and he says, oh, I kicked his ass, the way he's been saying. If I'm a real reporter, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, you know what? We know you said that. We know you kicked his ass, but we want to see it now. You know, and he's going to say, no, no, I kicked his ass. And we'll say, all right, yeah, but we want to see it now. A, a real reporter at a certain point, because he's playing on it, not me. I'm not the one playing on it. You know, like, I, 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 you know, I mention it because it gets asked of me, but I'm, you know, at the end of the day, he's got the video, not me. If he's going to keep playing on it, which he has, you know, when did he put pictures out? A month ago? Right. Yeah, recently. So if you're going to keep playing on it, it's been two years. If you keep playing on it, you know, and you're mad because I smacked the shit out of your boy. Imagine how mad he's going to be next month. If he was mad because I slapped Artem Lobov, just imagine how mad he's going to be next month when I put him in a hospital. Like, it's, he's going to probably go through the roof. So, if really, common sense would tell you if he had any kind of, kind of real video footage of, of any, doing anything positive, he would have released it already, you know? So, so I, I think it's up more so up to the media and, and the fact that mixed martial arts media are more groupies than, than actual media. It's, it's tough to, it's tough to uh, put out there and, and say that, you know, okay, you know, take them seriously. You know, I, I don't think anybody takes them seriously except the mixed martial arts world at this point. What do you think? Some detective work out of you, Paulie, man. Another career, perhaps, outside of boxing, man. Not really. Not really. It's just common sense. I mean, I, it was, uh, at, at, if he hadn't talked about it anymore, he'd say, okay, you know what? He didn't talk about it anymore, but he keeps going. So I don't, wouldn't any real reporter be like, okay, we know what you said, but let's see it now. And, and, and he's going to deny it. He's going to be like, no, nah, I kicked his ass. But then you got to you know, be a real reporter and be like, oh, okay, but let's see it. We want to see it. You know? And the fact that it never happens, the fact that he's, what he says goes every time, to me, shows the groupies that they are. I, 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 listen, there's always a, a firewall with the media and, and, and athletes. There's always a little bit of a firewall. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, you can get respect as a media member if, 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 if you do your job. You know? And at the end of the day, in mixed martial arts, I noticed that they're all groupies fans just with a, with a pad and paper or with a, or with a, a computer or whatever just, just writing about this guy or writing about the, the UFC, you know? And, and so it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough to really get a real report it, out it's, of it. It's well played, but just like how boxing's got politics, the media industry, like all industries, have politics, and you got to get clicks. It does. Of course, it does. Um, you know, like, for example, Golden Boy bans me from all Canelo Alvarez fights when Sky Sports... And that's why you weren't there. Yeah, that's why I wasn't there, but that's okay. I made more money than I would have by getting an appearance fee in Northern but, California. So why is Oscar mad at you? Um, I don't know. I think it's because I'm a Heyman fighter, you know. I, I think, I think um, Abner Morris got thrown out of the media center for the second Golovkin fight, uh, and he's a PBC fighter, you know, and, and he was actually with Canelo, you know, he's with the team Canelo, so, you know, I, I, I think it's just a matter of the PBC alliance and whatnot, I don't think it's anything to do with that, you know, some people thought it was maybe because of the things I said about Canelo being on steroids, but Teddy Atlas said the same thing, and he, he has a credential from ESPN. So, so it I, wasn't tainted beef? 
Uh, no, it definitely wasn't Tatum beef. But but I'll say what I'll say this. I'll say that um, me like I said, I'd rather I'd rather stand on my own two feet. You know, like if you're gonna ban me, then you ban me. You know what I mean? Like I, I'd rather know that when I sleep at night, I'm, I'm a man of my word, and I'm a man who, who who can I can sleep at night knowing you know I'm a, I, I represent myself and I represent you know I represent being a man in general. You know what I'm saying? Like people that will 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 bend their rules or bend their integrity for it, then you know that's up to them. Okay, well said. So Schmo over here is gonna go be America and beat you in FIFA. <laughs> I don't know if you can beat me in FIFA if you play USA, if you use USA. Bro. Did you get to uh, watch that game that day? I saw during your interview with the Schmo, you were oh, a bit man. upset you no, missed that game. I found out the result. I was really upset. That was a crazy comeback. That was really, really bad. I was actually really upset with my trainer. That was really, really bad because, you know, the first leg had been 3 0 at Barcelona. I had won. So the second leg, okay. Well, my trainer made me train in the morning. I'm like, all right, I didn't give him a big fight because I said, ah, the, you know, the tie is already over 3 0 in, in the first game, you know, in the first leg. The game ended 4 0 over Liverpool, bro. Liverpool's in the final. I missed one of the epic games. I missed one of the epic games. First of all, that Champions League semifinals was crazy because then the next day, Tottenham had an epic game eliminating Ajax as well. And I know to you guys this is like totally like foreign, but this was like the most unbelievable, unbelievable semifinals of Champions League football or soccer, as we say in America, or football, as you guys say in England, that we've ever seen. You know, it was, this was crazy. This was crazy. So now you got Liverpool versus Tottenham in the finals, and I bet you nobody, nobody would have predicted that. But it sounds like you guys uh, have some beef to settle on the FIFA I can't really let you play the remote control with those things in your hands. Well, that's though, why you, know? you can like, have one and the smoke can you know, have the other. Because then, you know, how are we going to play with this thing? I, I can't really play FIFA with this thing. I don't know. Maybe I can. We well, make up our own rules as yeah, we go, Paul. D- depending I, on who. I have to be handicapped because against him, you know, it's not like an even, it's not, it's not an even game. Well, I'm already playing as America, Paulie. How many more advantages do you need? All right, all right. Advantages. I'll, I'll, I'll use, I'll use uh, a lesser team. I'll use a lesser team. But before I let you guys go... He's a pro, he's a schmo, and I'm the Helen E. Sports. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. (laughs) We're out.